All right, welcome back, folks. Now we're talking about a new topic, one of the big ideas in the CS Principles course, data and information. So let's jump right into it. So most of you know that data information can facilitate knowledge. If you're going to purchase a house, you should find some data about what the houses are available, uh, what the going rates for things are, what the gentrification opportunities or, 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 or issues are there. So think about as a, that particular case for myself, I w when I was looking for a house, I pulled in a lot of data, as much data as I could to make an informed decision. So going through, if you have a chunk of data, you need to then process. You work for EPA, you work for the government, you work, you have collected this data, you you're work for some of the, you, this, is, this is in 2015, uh, we're going to have a new president uh, in a year or so. So there's a ton of data out there on how people voted and what they want. And those candidates are going to be thinking about it and looking at that data, right? So let's think about kind of the, that big data space. So what's the process? Is it, is it a one-time process? You just write a script and write a snap project or whatever and chunk up the data and you're done? No. The way you process data is interactive. You know, you play with it, you squeak it, you massage it, you try something, ah, it didn't work, you come over here. So it's an interactive uh, and engaging way that you work with data, okay? Um, once you have all those data, there's often a lot of noise. You know, there are, there are people who voted twice because their names are the same and they did, or maybe it was Chicago when they vote twice. That's my little joke for Chicago. So um, often you have data that has uh, spurious data that has to be cleaned and filtered. So you have to throw out times when your sensor had the sun. Let's say you have a temperature sensor and maybe one minute out of the whole day, the sun happens to reflect on things and like all the reflections hit on the sensor and all of a sudden it says it's the spike in temperature. That's not really, it's just the fact that reflections all hit on the temperature sensor at the same time. So you gotta like sometimes manually go in to clean things out if they look really, really off, okay? So you gotta filter and clean your data. You often have data from different sources. You have to combine those to enable you to learn some things. What if I cross-correlate voting patterns with income, with wh how many years you've been in the country, with da 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 da, and all those things factor into how I should message myself or what the new laws should come out to help people, okay? Um, clustering and classification says the data comes kind of unordered and just noisy and, and out there as just numbers, and you want to find out what the clusters are. Where are the needs? Okay, California has some water issues. So where do they need, where is the water, where are the needs for those water, who needs it the most, and where are the water sources? So let's cluster by the people who have it, people who want it, and try to figure out what we can do with that uh, as examples. Um, and classifying data, uh, just showing an example of classification. These are the group of people who want the water, people who have the water. Let's figure out how to geographically connect them. You have to then transform the data. You don't just sit and uh, once you do it, you have to kind of manage it, massage it, and transform and transmit it. So you're, you're, you're often taking it into different formats. It might come in, in metric, and you have to convert it to feet, pounds, or, or uh, vice versa. It, you often, it's not just as simple. The, the process of, me, of working with data is messy, and it involves a lot of iteration, a lot of transformation and translation as well for that. And the goal is, all of a sudden, blah, 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 and when I visualize it, wow, look at this pattern. And we're going to see a couple of great examples of that when we talk about the visualization section. But patterns do emerge once you do the right thing and do all the things we talked about. It's really exciting when a pattern just emerges and the data speaks to you. It's really, really cool. So people who are passionate about data, that's like, their, that's like the moment. That's like the holy grail. When all of a sudden the data comes up, all of a sudden, oh, that like all the people who have this disease live in this circle. Why? Because that's where they got their water from. And it's the reason is they got the disease is because the water source is contaminated. So that's really cool. And all of a sudden, wow, look at how that data just screams at you at the answer to the solution. It is certainly a collaborative process. Data is not, you know, the whole... There's maybe an image of the computer scientist as a solo rock star, you know, one, one person making a big company. And every once in a while you have people making companies and it's really one person's vision. But so often in entrepreneurial t uh, adventures and with working with data specifically, it is about the collaboration that lets you move to places you couldn't have individually. So collaboration is important, we say. Collaboration brings in multiple perspectives. You know, I, I know how to do visualization. You know how to do statistics. You know how to do filtering and cleaning. You know how to do machine learning. And all those people come together on a team to go places they couldn't have individually. That's important. Um, you got to obviously communicate between those participants. That's important. Um, the collaboration process is not just in the, well, let's set up and then let's go from there. It's involved in everything. It's involved in what questions you ask. The questions you ask of the data is a collaborative process. How you get to those answers, how you display and communicate those answers are all collaborative processes. They're not individual processes. Um, and obviously, when you collaborate, you could use face-to-face um, -face collaboration or online tools to do that. Some of the online collaborative tools are really powerful that let you work simultaneously, like Google Docs and other things that let you actually 
be remote but work simultaneously. We've talked about that before in this class as well. Um, and uh, finally on this, on this slide it says, that when you collaborate, you're often able to go places and go farther that you wouldn't have alone. You, even if you had each of the four people on a team, on the end people on the team, individually try to go as far as they could have, the group goes much farther than each of the individual players could go. So that's important as well. 